All right, so this first video is going to be on organisms and their relationships. So a lot of this will hopefully be pretty review for you, and it's really packed with some vocab. So make sure as you go through this, you're writing down the terms and the definitions. So first of all, ecology. What is ecology? This is a good vocab word to start with. So it's the study of the relationships between organisms and their environment. So organisms are the living parts. There's non-living parts of the environment, but there's also living parts of the envir environment. So if we start with the largest portion, we start with the biosphere. So this is a thin layer around the earth it extends above the Earth's surface and then below the ocean surface. By extending above the Earth's surface, it's kind of like our atmosphere, like the area that we can exist in without being in a spaceship is part of the biosphere. So biotic versus abiotic, these are two important things. So biotic factors are your living factors. Okay, these are things like plants and animals. Abiotic factors are your non-living, sunlight, temperature, rainfall. All of these things are abiotic factors. So a lot of times you're going to hear it talking about an abiotic versus a biotic and what plays a larger role or what's involved in an organism's relationship. And in most cases, it's both things that are involved. So the levels of organization. So this is going from smallest here to largest here. Okay, so the smallest thing is an organism. So that's the smallest. We have an organism. Then a group of the same organisms is a population. And then a community is different populations. An ecosystem has different communities, and then a biome is many different ecosystems, or I should say like ecosystems, and then the biosphere is basically the entire planet. So let's look at these terms. So like we just said, an organism is an individual, and right here these are all vocab words. These are all terms you definitely need to be familiar with. So a population is organisms of the same species, the same species. So it's a population of deer, a population of penguins. It's not different breeds of penguins or different types of deer. It's just a single species. Next, we have a community, which is a group of interacting populations that share the same area. It's really important to notice that. So in a forest, you have a forest community. You have a rabbit population. You have a tree population. You have a deer population. You have... I don't know, a wolf population. So these are all your interacting populations. They all rely on each other to survive, and they make up that community. The next thing, then, is an ecosystem. So this is a community and, really, really, really important, abiotic factors. So it's this part here, so all those different populations, and the abiotic factors. So your ecosystem, or let's go back to that same forest example, would also include the amount of sunlight in the forest, the temperature of the forest, whether there's a stream running through the forest. That's all abiotic factors of that ecosystem. And then biomes, which you've spent some time on already, are ecosystems with the same climate. So climate is like your temperature, your rainfall, just kind of your overall environment. So a biome isn't going to be a desert ecosystem and a tundra ecosystem. It's going to be different tundra ecosystems which make up all of that entire biome. A couple other words in these words, I have them separate because it's really important that you know the difference. So the first thing is the habitat. So this is where an organism lives. So your habitat could be as small as your neighborhood. It could be the state of Georgia, it could be the United States, but that's your habitat, it's your area. The niche, then, is the role you have in your environment. So in your environment as a human, you are a consumer, okay? You eat meat, you eat vegetables, you consume other things. But the niche that something else might have, so let's say we'll go back to the forest again. If we get rid of the rabbit population, that 
the role of that organism changes, but it also changes the role of all the other organisms. So the wolves or the different animals that used to prey on the rabbits now have to prey on different things. And then the rabbits used to consume some of the vegetation, so now that might grow more because there's not rabbits to control that population. So the niche is a little more affected if you remove an organism than a habitat would be, but they're both equally important. And then next is the different interactions. So you have competition versus predation. These are also on the same page because I want you to know the difference. And notice how it's community interaction. So this is going to be two living organisms. So competition is when you're competing for resources or you use the same resource as something else. So think about, I don't know, a food source or a water source something's going to compete over this water source. If you think about like the watering holes in Africa, when it gets really dry and there's only a limited amount of watering holes, all those organisms are competing for that access to fresh water. And your other one is you have predation. So predation is simple when one species gets its food from eating another. So the shark eats the fish. Something really simple. I'm pretty sure you guys are probably fine with a predator-prey example. The last thing is a symbiotic relationship. So really important, symbiosis, or up here the symbiotic, is a relationship in general. So this is the general definition, and these three are specific examples. So make sure you don't confuse that. So mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism are all examples of symbiosis, okay? So mutualism (coughs) is when both species benefit. So that's something like the easiest way to represent it is two smiley faces. They both benefit from it. And we'll talk about lots more examples of this in class. But something, for example, um, there are certain birds that ride around on the backs of, like, wild cattle. So these birds eat the ticks and stuff off of the cattle, which benefits the cattle. But then the birds also get food. So that's a mutualistic relationship. The next you have is commensalism. So this is where one benefits and one is kind of neutral. Sorry about the smiley faces. One's kind of neutral. So in this situation, it's like there's certain fish that kind of follow around sharks, and they just kind of get the food scraps from the shark's meal. So the shark isn't harmed or helped by this fish, but the fish gets kind of a free meal. And then the last is parasitism. So this is when one benefits and one is not benefited. So this is like a flea on your dog. So the flea is getting food, the blood, from your dog, but your dog is not benefited at all. Your dog's actually harmed. In some cases, dogs are even allergic, or they can have severe reactions to a flea. And that's all for organisms and their environment.